Thanks everyone for joining. Welcome to the uh, Bare Metal SICK meeting. Today, without further ado, we have the uh, Ironic PTA Yuri talking us through what happened for Ironic in Xena and what is planned for Z. Yuri, you have the floor. Thank you, Art. So basically, this is just a highlight of some of the cool things that we did in the Xena cycle and what are the plans that we will attempt to do in the Z cycle for Ironic. For those who doesn't know me, I'm Yuri Gregory, a senior software engineer at Head Hat and current Ironic PTL. You can pass this slide. So the agenda, just yoga cycle, what we were able to achieve there and the plans that we have for the Z cycles that cycle, and then I will open for questions. But if you have any questions while I'm providing any information, feel free to just do it. Go ahead. So for the yoga cycle uh, in the Ironic project, uh, we were able to add verify steps. It's a new step that you were able to run predefined actions in the driver for the node when you are in the transition from enroll to manageable, and this is prior to running introspection on it. Uh, the Headfish hardware type, now it's enabled by default. We were holding that for quite some time, I would say. And one of the cool things that we were able to do during the yoga cycle is now that the full deployment boot mode for the nodes is now UFI instead of legacy BIOS. So if you are an operator that you are using legacy BIOS and when you upgrade to Yoga, you have to specify things, even the configuration level for the conductor in the default boot, node, boot mode or for each node that you have separately. Uh, the fast track feature, now can be set at the node level. This is something that is really interesting that we were able to achieve during the cycle. Uh, also, we were able to verify the values for the default enable interface based on the enable hardware types that you have configured. So if you set the enable interface for an empty value and the enable hardware types will be able to figure out what values for each interface we can have configured in your deployment. We also add a new parameter to be able to distinguish between partition and whole disk image. This is the image type parameter and it's available in the instance info for the node. Next slide. Part two for the Ironic project. Uh, we have a deprecation for the networking boot. So basically booting final instance via network is deprecated except for the case when you are using boot from volume or, or trying to use the hand disk deploy interface. Uh, the IDRAC uh, was, uh, we had support for it in the RAID, BIOS and uh, management clean steps to be able to run without IPA when we have the hand disk disabled during cleaning steps. Uh, Redfish and iDrag Redfish management interface, the firmware update clean step, uh, now has support to use Swift, ATP servers, and file system support for Ironic when providing the stage files on it. And basically this is the full highlight for the Ironic project itself. Uh, we also were able to do some bug fixes, mainly for RAID and Anaconda driver also. Now we have things working for it. And next, in the Ironic Spectre, the only highlight that we have is now that we are we are able to support a filter by the state of the introspection for the node. So now if the operator wants to figure out for each node in the state for introspection, if it's starting, if it's finished, now they can filter by the state 
with the V1 introspection using the state filter. Uh, there on Python agent, we had a few features that are interesting. Uh, we add options to have name output files for the burning logging. Thanks, Arn, for that. And also a new option in the for the disk burning, agent burning field disk smart test. It was added. Uh, for network burning, nodes can now be paired dynamically via a distributed coordination backend as an alternative to the stack configuration that we have in the beginning. And if you want to give some highlights since you work on that, feel free also. Right, so, so for this one, I was like, okay, I was supposed to, or like thinking of waiting to the very end. But for this one specifically, the network burn-in and the via distribution coordination backend, we have just done this. I have, um, um, so far I had only tested this with 20 nodes. So basically 20 nodes go to this backend and say, okay, I need a partner to do the network burn-in. Um, but we had recently a new delivery of um, around 180 nodes. Uh, 150 of them were burned in, in parallel with this dynamic pairing and it worked. So at our scale, it seems to be working fine. So all these 150 nodes were basically boot up, booted up um, to do network burn-in. They all went to this um, room or this, I think it's room or group in, in the Zookeeper backend uh, and found a partner and all of them finished their network burn-in um, successfully. So it's basically like, they find a partner, one is writing, the other one receiving. Once they finish, they swap roles and do the same thing again. Um, and I was a little bit surprised when the like hardware colleagues came back to me and said, like, there's some things with uh, you know the whole auto discovery and auto registration, but they didn't mention anything about network, network burning, because that to me looked like the most fragile part. So I asked them. But they said it it worked like a charm. So it seems to be good. And uh, that's quite nice. The reason we moved from static to dynamic is that in case you have a static file and you basically configure these pairs um, well, statically or manually, uh, in case there's something wrong with one node or a handful of nodes, the partners won't be able to burn in unless you reconfigure the static mapping between them. With this dynamic approach, basically everyone who can will do the pairing and burn in and only the ones that are broken will be left behind. So this is the reason why we have this and it seems to be working okay. So we deployed this successfully. Ask you a quick question sure. or two. Um, so did you say that you're using Zookeeper on yeah. the back end? Yeah. Oh, neat. Okay. And um, so I guess you saw quite an increase in network traffic when you're able to do all this in parallel. Or maybe it was the same because with the static, you got the same network traffic if all the nodes were capable of uh, participating. Right. Okay, I don't have any graphs on showing the network traffic, but um, when I did this on the nodes, yeah, of course, I mean, they, the, the, um, this is basically saturating the network between the nodes, right? I mean, they're going at full speed. Um, depending on how many nodes we have, that involves one or multiple switches. So when, if it's like the same switch, um, it would probably be able to go at full speed if you have like multiple switches that need to go like one level up. Um, I don't think that the switches have like um, blocking factor that would allow to go at full speed, but I don't have the the numbers, but um, yeah, we need to check to see like the network. Right? But yeah, it basically is saturating the network on that switch, yeah. So when I did like one-on-one, -on -one, you could see that it goes to the full network speed basically, yeah. Thank you. So this is all done with FIO, right? That's great. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Arn. And so last but not least, uh, we were able to add express node cleaning uh, capability to IPA, mostly to be using environments with hybrid storage configuration, NVMe plus AGD. Uh, the idea is basically that we will try to perform fast and secure data erase in NVMe device if they support and other devices on the node that can't perform the secure data erase, it will fall back to erase device metadata only. Uh, 
also doing the the yoga cycle we were able to have some bug fix the most interesting one is that finally for software raid we were able to get rid of group to install and be default to be using fi boot manager and that's it from this part just one more thing if i may add to the uh, sure. the option about the named output file and um, mm -hmm. so people may wonder why do we have this because it's on the inside the ipa so why do i need to have a named file on the ipa where the login goes so this is something that we added in order to have so in our image we also have fluentd which will basically pick that file up and then send it to some um, central logging that this would go. And that's easier if you are actually able to um, have the output of the various burn-in steps like disk or network or CPU in, in specific files so that you can, fluent, can send a FluentD configuration with the image that actually knows where to find these files and um, send them to a central, in our case, an Elasticsearch instance where you can then visualize things. So this is what these options for. Yeah, makes sense. Awesome. Shall I move on with slides? Yes. So for the Z cycle, these are some of the plans that we have. We are still figuring out a few things and some are under discussion. So I didn't add everything here. Uh, mostly one of the interesting topics that we have is the iron safety guard. Uh, it's focused on the cleaning operations that we have in Ironic. So the idea is that we will be able to possibly limit the number of concurrent oper cleaning operations that we have in uh, deployment. And also uh, spe maybe specify a list of disks that should or shouldn't be cleaning in the deployment for each node. This would probably be at the node level, the configuration to specify the node if you want or don't want to be clean. And the idea is that lim limiting the number of concurrent operations that we have for cleaning, you can imagine that if there is an attacker and they have degradations, they can try to delete all the nodes that you have in your deployment. So having this configuration, it would put uh, be good for the operators so they can limit the number of nodes that will be affected if someone is trying to delete all the nodes in their deployment, basically. Uh, our back phase two, uh, this is a goal from the TC uh, that we have been doing for a while. Thanks, Julia, for all the efforts on that. Uh, we are in the phase two. Uh, that is describing the document from the TC. And basically, it's adding support for the service world, if, if I'm correct. If I'm not, please just let me know. Uh, CI Health, it was a topic during the PTG that we have some discussions. Uh, we will be trying to add more testing coverage to our CI, basically related to some of the drivers that we have, especially the Anaconda one and trying to re-enable some of the jobs uh, that we let for no voting for a while, like the grenade mode no job, and also IPv6 testing. It, this one is already fixed. Uh, we are working mainly on the grenade and also try to reach some of the community goals, basically. Uh, that is one related to skip up a grade uh, from tick to tick release. So basically, if you have a yoga version, you can upgrade directly to the AA version that will be out uh, next year. And also we will be trying to ensure that we'll be able to use the new Ubuntu 22. I don't recall the name at the moment. Um, hey. Open con hey. Hey, you're, are we upgrading Zool as well, or is that something that's done by the infra team on our behalf? Not sure if I got upgrading Zool, you mean? Cool. Zool, yeah. Zool. The, open the open dev Zool is upgraded as new releases come out, and that's all managed by the infra team. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So it just happens. All right. Yeah. 
Do you know, are they going to five? I think that's the, uh, the latest. Oh, uh, we may already be on five. Okay. Well, great. thank you. Yeah. I mean, it's best to just directly ask the dev folks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next topic, open config support for net and bare metal. Uh, basically, the idea in this one that we will be adding device configuration capabilities for the networking bare metal. Uh, this is a use case that it's valid for access and edge switches. Uh, since most of main vendors have done their ML2 mechanism uh, for pool that pl accept plugins to have support for that. Uh, this is an effort that is ongoing and mainly driven by Herald. Uh, deploying clean steps prov improvements during the PTG, we had some discussions related to that. Uh, the idea that we could have custom timeouts for each uh, deploy or clean steps and also be able to have uh, per nodes overrides for it. That's it for the Z cycle, some of the plans that we have. If I forgot something that we will be planning to do, please let me know. <laughs> Next slide. So open for questions if anyone has no. Thanks a lot, Yuri. Does anyone have questions? Other points to raise? One thing that I would be interested in is, is if, if we know something about the adoption of Redfish, because we make this in like default driver. And at least at CERN, um, what I checked, Earlier today, we have a couple of hundred nodes now that use Redfish as their default uh, hardware interface uh, in production. But I was mm -hmm. wondering what the adoption is, or if we have a feeling for the adoption of Redfish for in, in deployments. Because one of the things is that we have to at some point decide, similarly to the decision whether we move from BIOS to UFI, which was a little bit easier because we were basically forced to do it uh, by vendors because vendors moving to UFI. Um, IPMI still works, so I, I don't know if like, uh, you know, what the, uh, what the way forward will be. I mean, it both works at the moment for us, so we can use IPMI and we can also use Redfish. Um, there are some things that we need to iron out around like, so maybe it's also special because our users have access to um, the console, for instance, so they, they get access to the, to the credentials. So the, all the tooling, like the, um, the Redfish tackle box, um, there's still some things that are open in order to like, okay, see the service event log or something. All of this is improving, but I'm just wondering like, what, what's the adoption? I mean, what, what's the feeling for uh, Redfish So use? I can't speak to our, so I'm with AMD, right? And I can't speak to our downstream customers' uh, plans. I do know that our, all of our test mules are running Redfish very heavily. And mm -hmm. my understanding is that our internal tools in like BIOSes and BMC, you know, out of band management, uh, we don't tend to make those changes unless our customers, and by that I mean like the large server vendors, have decided to go to that. Mm -hmm. Like we're not usually going off in a different direction than they are. Exactly. So with that, I heavily suspect that you're going to see everybody trend towards Redfish fairly soon. Okay. Uh, just based on the fact that we're heavily using it, you know, uh, in our development machines. And for those who don't know me, uh, I do one of the, the server hardware bare metal testing cloud at AMD. And so everything I've got is a test mule. Like uh, if y'all ever see one of our models, something has gone deeply wrong, <laughs> but uh as a result, we write our own BMC code and win our own biases. Uh, okay. And like I said, we tend to stay pretty on top of what customers are using downstream because if we don't test with Redfish and they're heavily using Redfish and that mm -hmm. has a problem integrating with our reference BIOS, then that's a problem. All right. It, well, in, in our deployment, sorry, Joe, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, from my, from my experience looking at cases, uh, I would say probably half the cases I, I look at these days, 
are actually Redfish based. Mm -hmm. And that's where the default examples all just say IPM on it. So I think we should probably consider it. Yes, people are trending to it. The other aspect that we should probably keep in mind is we are starting to see some vendors have weird breakages with IPMI, cool. uh, especially when I get to Eufy for uh, hardware that doesn't support BIOS mode anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, weird things are happening. And yeah. Okay. So yeah, we, are, sorry, we are seeing, we are seeing some stuff from the ODMs when we get ours that their default you know, was not enabling it until we rewrote our BIOS to turn it back on. And so, uh, like I said, we have that ability. Nobody else does, <laughs> realistically. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I imagine you're going to see that more and more as time goes on. Right. Because I was mostly in our deployment. So I was mostly introducing Redfish as like an alternative. So I was doing, mostly doing this after the hardware colleagues have basically verified everything with IPMI, all the tooling is based on IPMI. And then once they, the nodes end up with me and ironic, I change the hardware driver and use retros instead for all new deliveries since a while. And it seems to be working. Well, there were some issues in the very beginning. Remember this ETAC thing, and there were some other things that are a little bit off. But now, since like three or four deliveries, it's actually working quite, quite well. But at the same time, I have to like sell this to the to the hardware colleagues, and say like, "Hey, this is now on Redfish. Get used to the new tools." So um, this is what I was wondering because for for as I said, for UFI, it's a little bit easier because we were forced to to move. Um, I was also saying we need some kind of. Uh, I'm waiting for some uh, nice features like this. We have discussed this already. These one-time links for for the HTML5 console. And um, if you can get something like this, that's quite an, a nice thing where you can say, okay, that, that it makes Redfish superior. Because if you stay with the like switch on, switch off, set the boot device, yeah, there's very little to, to sell actually. But yeah, that being said, I'm trying to like move everything to Redfish that we have. Everything you would yeah. to Redfish. And basically on my side, most of the cases that we are getting from customers is related to Redfish also more than 75%, I would say. I don't see many, many cases related to IPMI. But this is, this is because, so this is the number of cases that you have, but how does that relate with the number of deployments that you have that have actually Redfish? So if you have like a large number of Redfish deployments, that's kind of good. But if you have Most a small, of, small number of Redfish deployments, which create a lot of errors, then that's rather bad. Yeah, when we consider like, for example, going in the telco scenario, I would say like, yeah, everyone runs Redfish basically. Okay. Yeah. So I will use this like to, to sell it even more. Yeah, I think that's a good point uh, because of the cryptography issues that exist in IPMI. Uh, anyone with, running with uh, strong security groups can not be running IPMI. Right. Uh, realistically, um, right. unless they've already accepted it and just go, it's a known evil and we're okay, <laughs> which is not great either. <laughs> um, so one of, the, one of the interesting things that I've, start, I've been seeing is I'm not necessarily seeing customer cases on new IPMI hardware issues. I'm seeing it from our own internal labs where <laughs> people are, are getting new shipments in and stuff goes sideways. Oh. It, we're not see, really seeing it from customers. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of folks are now running IPMI, but I'm mean, sorry, Redfish by default, not IPMI. Right. Okay. Thanks. I've got a number of nodes I cannot reveal, but it is very large. And yeah, Redfish is our default. And it's only getting larger. And I haven't heard any reports for our next generation test mules doing anything other. Like they'll support IPMI, but they're not making it a first class citizen. Mm. That's kind of echoing what I'm seeing, um, at least with vendors. They're now basically expecting you just to use uh, Redfish. And the, I think part of the problem is IPMI became synonymous with BMC. So people were mixing the terms, and then it's only take 
been maybe with the last couple of years that people have been able to start separating what's back apart. Okay. Is there any more questions or comments? Not seem to be the case. Okay, thanks again, Yuri, for the presentation. Yeah, next slide, there is some information also. Ah. So if you Sorry. have any questions <laughs> and you want to reach out to us, feel free to join the RSC channel OpenStack Ironic on OFTC Network or send an mail to OpenStack Discuss mailing list with Ironic tagging the subject.